Alrighty, today I want to do a little <coughs> riff rant on the inherent incompatibility between awakening liberation and capitalism as such and the challenge of teaching yoga <laughs> within a capitalist construct because of that reason. So to give you a concrete example, I am teaching tantric yoga right now at a local studio and recently I had a student who was doing my class for the first time and they're like, what's tantric yoga? And in essence, tantric yoga is a yoga practice that is done with a tantric view, perceiving reality through the view teachings of tantra. And it's tantric yoga is also another way to look at it, is when we entrain three or more different elements. So we'll be simultaneously working with the physical body, with the breath, and also particularly with awareness and or mantra, mudra, visualization. There's at least three elements, right? Which gives the mind some scaffolding and allows us to step out of the individual sense of self. Or, and or, tantric yoga is working with the energetic body primarily, not so concerned with the physical body, although of course the physical body is impacted by the practice. Anyway, I'm like, just do the class and you'll get a sense, recognizing that how I offer and teach tantric yoga will be different from how other tantric teachers do that as well. And at the end of the class, I was kind of like, hey, how was it? And the student was like, mm, I, the, what, what the student said was, in essence, I come to yoga to distract myself from unpleasant negative thoughts. And I found with your class, it brought me into more contact with, which, with what was already there within me. And I was like, wow. <laughs> You know, it was such an incredible insight. I was so grateful to the student for sharing that because that person probably won't come back to my class simply because, <laughs> because they're using yoga as a distraction technique, right? They're using yoga to feel good. And, and that's often what happens when people come onto the spiritual path, is the way they're relating to the path is the way they're relating to all of life, which is about seeking comfort and avoiding pain. However, if you're actually on the path, the whole point of the path is to start to liberate from suffering. And what will liberate you from suffering is when you surrender to meeting and embracing whatever is there, all of the things. Right? And when that begins to happen, so-called negative thoughts don't feel bad anymore. They don't, they're, just, they're just what's arising. You know? It's not really a big deal. Um, and so this is why, if we're working within a capitalist model as such, you know, the po popular classes that bring in the people and therefore bring in the money are sometimes the classes that continue to prop up students attachments or students aversions they cater to students and the whole thing about the path is it's not about catering to students it's about challenging students yes supporting students giving them teachings giving them practices and a lot of it is challenging students because when people are stuck in their conditioning and they're stuck in their you know the lens or the filter that is generating suffering they need to be challenged in order to start to wake up and see through um, and this is something I've been aware of as a teacher for a long, long time. Like I first began teaching in a gym in 2006, and then I began teaching in a studio around 2007. Um, started doing training in, I think, early 2009. And when I started to teach my own community classes, I taught via koha, right? Koha is a Māori word from Aotearoa, New Zealand, which means gift, so I was gifting the classes to the community and in return, right, so koha is a reciprocal arrangement of generosity. So I gift out of generosity these teachings and classes and then students would gift out of generosity back to me. And so that was how I ran the, the first classes I ever ran. And ever since then, I have been playing with koha, as we say in Aotearoa, or dana is another word, right? So dana is a, a Buddhist word or comes from the Buddhist tradition. And dana is, again, it's about gifting. It's about the field of generosity. And this is something that I'm really, really interested in because I can see 
the inherent incompatibility between capitalism, which seeks to leverage and increase profit to the maximum, right? Like that's what it's all about, in essence, at the cost of the environment and the people and all things. Um, and awakening liberation wisdom traditions, which are about supporting people to wake up, you see. And those two things just don't really, like, the, <laughs> so, yes, I'm teaching at studios and I freaking love it, you know, because I, I'll show up and I'll, do the, and I'll do the thing. And my classes may not be the most popular on the schedule because the thing about yoga studios is people going to yoga studios are not necessarily at all interested in the spiritual path or awakening and liberation, right? They're often doing the practice. The practice itself has been extracted which is a capitalism thing. Capitalism will extract. So the practice has been extracted from the wisdom tradition, from the view teachings, from the context, in order for people to get, now the capitalist thing, whatever they want to get from the practice. Oh, I want to get flexibility. I want to get strength. I want to get calmness. I want to get more productivity. Now, there is nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just what's happening, right? However, from the perspective of awakening liberation, it's not very effective and it won't work. <laughs> and when I teach, what I'm interested in is awakening and liberation. That is how I'm teaching. I'm teaching from that view, from that perspective. If you are interested in waking up, if you are interested in embodied liberation as a householder in regular society, if you're interested in enjoying life regardless, regardless of the circumstances, then that is what I'm offering as a teacher. Um, and so this inherent incompatibility, like I've been in business as such, you know, for 10, 15 years as a yoga teacher, and it's been a really interesting ride. Um, there have been a lot of moments, you know, like mostly I was living, you know, they would say below the poverty line, but I never felt poor. Like I always felt like, wealthy for various reasons um, and I've got to a point now where I have found a way to meet my basic living costs um, via contracts right so that I can show up online and just offer the teachings for free as such and that they're not I don't like using that word for free because that implies that I offer and that's it that's the end of the relationship and that is not what Dana is about Dana is about recognizing the interconnectedness of us all. It is about recognizing that we live in a web, right? And so when I offer, there is a recognition that you are receiving and that you offer back. And maybe you simply offer your attention, you know? Like that is a gift. Your attention, your presence is a gift. Um, maybe you share it and you offer your energy because you're so excited by what you're receiving. Um, there's many different things that get offered. And so the community that I am setting up in collaboration with other spiritual teachers, we're offering that for free. Shelter is, again, I don't really want to use that term. It doesn't, you know, it's for free. And also a big part of the culture in the community is that we are starting to work with Dana and we're starting to work with the gift economy and we're starting to look at how does one live within a capitalist structure and decondition completely the capitalist conditioning and operate from a field of generosity from the gift economy right and this is work that Charles Eisenstein started with his book Sacred Economics and my sense my feeling is that this is critical and crucial for us as a society because capitalism is eating up the planet, right? And capitalism, fossil fuels, all of that whole industry has the governments in its grip. And that's what's running the fucking show is extraction, right? With no honoring of the mother, with no honoring of life itself. It is all about <laughs> the money. It's so short-sighted. Oh my God. Bless those, bless those humans who are so conditioned and caught in that worldview that the idea of making money is the thing that excites them. Like, what for? What for? What for? And so, <laughs> you know, as a spiritual teacher, 
working in this field of dana of generosity you know like my grand plan and i love i like to go a little grandiose you know but like grand plan is to if i can like decondition from within myself completely from the capitalist model and work from the field of generosity where I'm no longer going into survival and I'm not afraid, right? I'm not afraid. And or if fear arises, I face the fear. Then I can support other people to do the same thing, right? And what happens? What happens when you are no longer afraid, when you no longer let fear keep you in prison? Because that is what I see. And so many, almost everybody out there is fucking afraid. Right? And now is the time to not be afraid. Now is the time to stand up. You know, the genocide that is happening in Gaza, the ex extraction that's going on all over the place, the different pipelines, and all the local communities and the indigenous communities keep standing up and saying no more. And they keep fighting against the machinery of the state as such, which is in support of the corporations that are extracting all the wealth at the cost of the people. And I, when I look at this, I see that we have the power. We have the power when we know how to work with our inner being to decondition and to use our practice, to use awakening and liberation for the collective recognizing that we are waking up together. Right? It is not an individual pursuit anymore. There isn't actually, there really isn't any such thing as such as an individual um, Alrighty, that's my little rant, my little rave on the inherent incompatibility of spiritual teaching with capitalism as such, right? And then how do we how do we deal with that as teachers? And this is nuanced, you know, and a lot of people are going to object quite likely to some of the things that I'm saying here. Um, but fuck objections. You know how I like to roll? What's my desire? What do I want to live into? What do I want to experience? And then I head in that direction and I deal with every obstacle as it arises and I find my way through and over and under and around. That is what I did coming out of a psych ward 20 years ago, right? In terms of starting to work with healing and recoveries from apparent psychosis. And that is what I'm doing now when I look at all of this. Uh, and if you're curious and you want to join me and the community, come into Shelter. We're on school. You can see the link on YouTube there. And um, yeah, maybe start to ponder, how conditioned are you by capitalism? How conditioned are you by capitalism? And the thoughts are rising right now, the objections coming up right now, is that arising from conditioning? Is it? That's my question to you. <sighs> blessings on the goddess. Yeah, blessings on the goddess, goddess for this unfolding. May all beings be free. May all beings be free. And that means being free of fear. If fear has you, you are not free, my friend. You are not free yet. <laughs>